I've come down into the battlefield of the Meuse Argonne. It was here in September 1918 that the American Expeditionary Force went into battle for the very first time as a major formation. America had entered the war in 1917 with a vast but untrained army. And it was this battle, finally, it was ready to be committed to the fight. And although this is only the last six weeks of the war, really, America played a major part in this and also paid a mighty price. More than 50,000 combat dead and more American soldiers became casualties on the first day of the Meurs Argonne Offensive than on D-Day in 1944. It was a great learning curve for these American troops fighting their way across this Argonne region with its forests and its ravines and its extensive defences that were part of the German Hindenburg Line. It proved to be a costly battle but a decisive one with American troops fighting alongside the French army and pushing up in those six weeks of combat that went from the offensive of September 1918 through to battle on the very last day of the Great War on the 11th of November 1918 with American troops being the last to fall on that final day of World War I. And today, in this little visit, we're going to get a sense of that Meuse Argonne battlefield and the cost that America paid, that sacrifice here in 1918. The American Memorial at Varennes, where we've started today, commemorates troops from Pennsylvania who fell in the offensives of the Great War, not just here in the Meuse Argonne, but in a wider area, but in particular here because it was Pennsylvania troops that liberated this village of Varennes during that Meuse Argonne offensive. This is a big memorial, it's a huge statement, America's first entry onto a world stage and paying the price for that in the Battle Seer of 1918. I've walked now up onto the high ground of Mont Falcon. This was a position on a hill overlooking this part of the Meuse Argonne battlefield and today it's the site of the American Memorial. And here the US 79th Division stormed these heights with heavy losses in September 1918, fighting their way through trenches and barbed wire. And the top of the hill, the ruins of the village and the church turned into a strong point by the Germans with incredible fields of fire that cost heavy casualties to the American infantry fighting their way up these slopes supported in the end as well by French tanks, all part of that learning curve that American soldiers had here in September of 1918. And today this mighty monument built in 1926 overlooks those battlefields and commemorates America's dead from this phase of the Meuse Argonne Offensive. As you come up behind the American Memorial, you come into the ruins of Montfalcon Church on the very crest of the hill. The Germans had fortified this position and the doughboys, the American soldiers, fought their way up here in a bitter battle in September 1918. And the Germans had placed machine gun positions here and there was a main observation post as well. And today these battle scarred and battled, ruined church remains are a kind of snapshot of 1918 and that period of the Great War, left as they were at the end of the conflict, and give us an idea of what many of these ruined battlefield locations were like. And you can come up here, you can really touch First World War history when you come into these ruins at Mont Falcon. Tucked away here at the back of the American Memorial is this observation post. And as we walk round it, it was built being on a high point of Mont Falcon so that soldiers could get up into it disguised as part of the main church buildings. 
This village of Montfaucon and much of this region of eastern France was once in the Zone Rouge, the Red Zone, those communities that had suffered that catastrophic destruction during the four years of the Great War. Most of the villages and towns were rebuilt, so ruins like this are actually quite rare to find and are very vivid, tactile reminders of the cost of war. Not the human cost, but the cost to the landscape of the First World War, landscapes that in places like this were completely destroyed in the battles of 1918. And here amongst the shrapnel scarred pillars and the ruins of the church tower and the German observation and machine gun bunkers, we can kind of reach out and touch the past, touch 1918 and the battles involving the Doughboys against the German army here. I've come up now into the village of Cunel, one of the small villages in the path of the American Meuse Argonne Offensive in September 1918, but perhaps one of the bloodiest. This village changed hands on numerous occasions during that battle and thousands of American casualties were suffered in the fighting in the fields and the woods around this village of Cunel. If anything really stands for what that Meuse Argonne Offensive was about, I think it's the battles here at Cunel in September of 1918. And if ever one day there was a, a drama or a film about the exploits of America's soldiers in that battle, that forgotten battle of the Great War, particularly in America, it really should be about the village of Cunel and the men and the regiments and the divisions, multiple divisions of the American Expeditionary Force that fought here in those dying embers of the Great War on the Western Front. These battles of September 1918 in the opening stage of the Meuse-Argonne Offensive and on that first day more American soldiers died than on D-Day in 1944. So a costly battle for the American Expeditionary Force was a learning curve as well for the American experience of war. This was the largest American army since the Civil War and the first American campaign on a European continent up against a determined enemy like Germany. And an enemy that had, in this case, in this area, years to build up their defences. So it's understandable, just like the British and the French in the early years of the First World War, it's understandable that it took the Americans some time to really get their heads around what kind of war this was. But that level of cost will see dramatically in the Meuse-Argonne Cemetery at Romagna.